Normally, true blood is red. I said normally because that's what we're used to. I mean, our blood is also red after all. However, did you know that there are various blood with various color in the animal kingdom? For example, cephalopods have blue blood. Many terrestrial worms and some specific lizards have green blood. Some marine worms have purple blood, while sea squirts and sea cucumbers have yellow blood. Decoloration is influenced by the blood composition. Hence, different animals could have different blood color. That's quite normal actually. What's interesting is when an animal's blood doesn't have any color. That's the case for the crocodile eye species. But how could that be? Well, let me bring up the question. What exactly is crocodile ice fish? <coughs> crocodile ice fishes are bony fish. In fact, they are classified in the Perciformes order, which is literally the most generic fish order. Almost half of the known bony fishes are classified in this order after all. The crocodile ice fishes are classified in one family, which is Hanichtidae. Ichthys means fish, while Hanos means gate, because they are fishes with white gate. That's why they are commonly called the crocodile ice fish, because most of them have long snout, albeit not that long to be honest. They are also commonly called the white-blooded fish because of their colorless blood, which I'll talk about later. Some simply called them ice fishes without the crocodile prefix, but I decided to keep the crocodile prefix because the Japanese jirao is also commonly called ice fish, but they are from a completely different family, different order even. Anyway, while Hanichtida is indeed a unique family, there are several genera of crocodile ice fishes, some with several species. According to World Register of Marine Species, there are 12 genera and 26 species of ice fishes in total. All of them can be found all the way south around the Antarctic, especially in the Southern Atlantic and Indian Ocean. I'm talking generally by the way. Of course, each species is distributed in more specific area. Next, let's talk about their morphology. Crocodile ice fishes are typically around 25 to 50 centimeters long. Their body is elongated and tapered. They don't have scales, which is of course unusual for fishes, but still not that particularly unique because some other fishes also don't have scales. Like I said earlier, most of them have elongated and flattened snout. While some of them don't seem to deserve the crocodile prefix in their name, if I show you some images like this one for example, you should understand why they are named that way. It is also noted that they only have one nostril. Although I'm not sure whether that applies to all species. They don't have protractile mouth, but the gape is indeed quite big. Their mouth is equipped with small conical teeth. Their opercular bones usually have ridges or even spines. They have two dorsal fins, a pair of pectoral fins, a pair of pelvic fins, a long anal fin, and of course, caudal fin. Oh, by the way, just like fish in general, these fins vary between genera and species, so it can be used as diagnostic character. Some species also have horn-like protrusion on the tip of their snout. Their body is typically pale, silvery, or grayish. Sometimes it can be translucent, but not transparent, of course. The head and back typically have darker coloration. They also have dark bands or crossbars on their sides, which vary between species. And yeah, that's their morphology. Not especially unique. What's striking about them is their physiology, which of course is strongly related to their lifestyle. So let's talk about it, with emphasis on their blood. But before that... So, what's with their blood? Why are they colorless? Well, before talking about that, let's talk about the opposite. Why is our blood red? The answer is iron. There is a protein called hemoglobin in our blood. That's the one responsible for binding and transporting oxygen in red blood cells. To put it simply, what's binding the oxygen is the iron. When iron binds with oxygen, the compound reflects red light, which then gives red blood cells the red color. And by extension, our blood is red. But that is not the case for all animals. Some animals don't have hemoglobin. For example, Cephalopods have hemocyanin instead. Those have copper instead of iron, and those give bluish color. Leeches have chlorocruorine instead, which is green when oxygenated. Hence, their blood is typically green. Marine worms have hemerythrin instead. Hence, their blood is typically violet. 
sea squirts and sea cucumbers have vanabine, hence their blood is typically yellow. So yeah, it depends on the composition of their blood, what's binding the oxygen. So, what about the colorless blood of the crocodile ice fishes? Well, the answer is quite obvious actually. They simply don't have any of those. Unlike other vertebrates, they don't have hemoglobin, nor any oxygen binding protein. That's why their blood is colorless. Not only that, by the way, they also don't have myoglobin. That's the one responsible for binding oxygen in your muscles. That's what makes muscle reddish. And so, their muscle is also almost colorless. Pretty unique, right? Okay, but hold on a second. They lack oxygen binding protein. So how could they live? Well, they carry oxygen with their blood plasma, which is, of course, significantly less efficient. However, their habitat enables them to live like that, to some extent, of course. They live in the Southern Ocean, which is very cold. It's basically the coldest water on Earth. That could be detrimental, of course. However, it has higher oxygen content. Another interesting fact is, the temperature of Southern Ocean is relatively stable for the past 10 million years. This relatively constant environment makes it suitable for a naturally selected evolution. Because, you know, at least one parameter is constant. Relatively, of course. To summarize, they could survive even without oxygen binding protein because the water where they live is rich in oxygen and it has been constantly like that for a million years. However, that's still not enough. We thought the loss of hemoglobin could be helpful for them to reduce viscosity of the blood, which is still true of course, but the disadvantages severely outweigh the benefit of decreasing blood viscosity. To tip the scale, crocodile ice fishes have several adaptations to survive in their habitat. First of all, they pump a lot of blood, four times of the typical fishes. For doing so, they have larger blood vessels and larger heart. Their heart can be five times larger than other fishes. Their heart can also absorb oxygen directly from the blood they pump, which makes it a little bit more efficient. If you read older publications, it was also noted that the lack of scales covering their body helps in oxygen division. By that I mean, they basically can breathe through their skin, which is still true to some extent, but it's not significant enough to consider that as an adaptive evolution. It does help in supplying oxygen to their heart though. Not only that, in some species, their heart ventricle has myoglobin. All of these are required to have a better heart, so they can pump more blood to compensate their lack of hemoglobin. So yeah, that's how they can survive. Now that you've heard how they work, the question is, why are they like that? Why did they lose their hemoglobin and myoglobin in the first place? Well, we don't know for sure, but one of the most recent theories stated it's not because it's beneficial, but simply because of limitation. They were lacking iron. There is not much iron sources in their habitat, but their bodies still need iron of course. Hence, they need to compensate in some ways. And yeah, they lose hemoglobin and myoglobin which needed iron so that they can conserve iron. That's about their blood. But they still have some interesting adaptation related to their behavior though. So let's talk about the rest of their behavior. Crocodile ice fishes mainly feed on fishes and krills. These prays typically swim along the water column. Meanwhile, crocodile ice fishes spend most of their time idling near the bottom of the ocean. Why? Because they don't have swim bladder. Same with other fishes in its suborder. So, again and again, they have to compensate. They exhibit delayed ossification. They have lower bone density. Some bones are reduced completely, and some are still cartilage. That way, they increase their buoyancy, you know, because they are lighter. That way, they can swim upwards to seek fishes and krills. Crocodilized fishes typically reproduce around late summer to early winter. Oh, by the way, in case you are unaware, that's around January to May. Yeah, summer starts at December on the south. They typically form a breeding ground where multiple individuals nest and spawn together. Oh, by spawn, I mean they lay eggs, not spawning out of nowhere like in video games. They can lay hundreds or even thousands of eggs, and one parent, typically the male, will guard the egg until the egg hatch. Spawning time and incubation time could vary between species. It can be as short as 2 months, while it can also be as long as 6 months. Sexual maturity also varies between species. Some are sexually mature at 3 years old, 
while some reach sexual maturity at around 5 to 8 years old. And yeah, that is crocodile ice fish. What seems unique about them is actually quite detrimental and need various compensation just so they could survive. Considering how unusual their biology is, who knows what will be discovered in the future. But for now, let's just learn what is known. And that's all for now. Oh, by the way, while this is not the same ice fish as the one on top of sushi, some species of crocodile ice fishes are also commonly consumed. Best example would be the mackerel ice fish, which can be found around South Georgia. Anyway, enjoy your day.